So we caught up with the president of the mm -hmm. St. John Sea Dogs, Trevor Georgie, before the game against St. John. Gracious with his time after calling his team out in the Memorial Cup. Um, and trust me, I leaned into it and I owned it. Um, so yeah, he was uh, he was gracious with his time to give us a few minutes before the game. And um, I really enjoyed talking to him. Mm -hmm. He's he's quite a knowledgeable uh, knowledgeable fellow. Um, so here's the interview. <laughs> View from the other bench. We're here with Trevor Georgie, president of the St. John Sea Ducks. He's gladly agreed to join us. Even though I said his team wasn't going to do well in the Memorial Cup, he showed up. Just, I guess just this season, kind of since you won the Memorial Cup and then into kind of rebuilding the, the fan base, how's that been for you guys? I mean, first off, uh, I thank God I've never taken any of your bets or any of your advice for, for placing any bets on sports because yeah, that, that would that. That have been a rough yeah, one. Don't do that. Uh, that would have been a rough one. But, uh, yeah, no, look, it's uh, anytime. Our fans have been through it enough with rebuilds. They understand it. They get it. It's a smart fan base, so they know um, just what it takes and our recipe. You know, we're willing to, um, you know, suffer the lows of lows to get to the highs of highs. But this season, um, you know, I think a common thread is we don't want to get back to that point of um, – of you know those real lows you know you look at our group we're, we're in all our hockey we're in all the games this season um you know there's a lot of players on our team that are really stepping up um i think it's been i think every game is going to be a hard uh hard uh win for the opposition and uh, i think we can surprise some folks so um i'm really happy with the group thus far and uh again just just building piece by piece brick by brick and uh we have a plan and um, you know, Anthony and, and Travis are leading the charge uh, to uh, to execute it. Here we are, just uh, over a year away from the we were moved from the Memorial Cup here, a very successful Memorial Cup for your organization. Uh, looking ahead to the 2025 Memorial Cup, um, obviously uh, Moncton was you know all in according to uh, President Robert Irving, uh, but uh, the league came down and said that um, you know it has been in Quebec for 10 years, so we're going to have it in Quebec. What side do you take on that argument? Are you on the side of it should be in the best venue? Or are you on the side of, yeah, maybe it is Quebec's turn? Great question. Um, look, I can understand the optics of back-to-back Memorial -back Cups in Atlantic Canada. Um, but it's a process. And, you know, I feel really bad for Moncton and for Robert and for, for the team up there because I know how much it means to them to host with that beautiful building. You guys are doing all the right things by hosting other events. Um, you're taking all the right steps to really endear yourself to any bid committee by demonstrating your ability to put on world-class events in your building. So, and your team looks to be ready uh, for that year too, which is really hard to align as well. Um, so look, I, I understand the, the view of, okay, well, it's been to the Maritimes twice in a row. That being said, you know, there was a pandemic in between that. That being said, um, you know, their team looks to be ready. It's you know, supposed to be a process. Um, I, I feel bad. I genuinely feel bad for, you know, tonight I won't feel bad for the Wildcats. <laughs> They're not going to feel bad for us, you know. Um, but they're like an hour and a half up the road. We would love to have a Memorial Cup uh, in our province again. It's great for the region. And you take your competitive hat off and you're like, yeah, of course, you'd love to draw more attention to hockey in Atlantic Canada, specifically in New Brunswick. And uh, look, I love, I love, I love the folks in in Ramouski. You know, they're they're, they're going to have a real good team too. It's not taking away anything from the others, um, but you just hate to see a team just not put a bit in because of you know feeling a certain way. So obviously we're here tonight, and it's Cardinal officials showing up. Um, you guys have done a real good job in bringing events to your to your stage there, and and this year I think every game up until Christmas has an event. Just. What is that like to put that all together for a year in advance to try and get people inside this building? Because it is a tough year uh, in year two of your rebuild. And, and you know now with junior hockey, like you're competing with people's grocery money. You're competing with people's bills and everything. You got to try and get them in um, when maybe your team's not going to dominate night, night after night. It's easy to come out to a building when you're winning. Um, but like, what is that putting that together to try and get people out here on, on those kind of nights? I find uh, so often I have the opportunity to give uh, a lot of credit to Anthony and to Travis and the Hockey Ops folks, but our Business Ops folks work tremendously hard, and I know you guys appreciate that. I see the, the posts and see the, the support for what we do here. So like Andre Steven, who's our Director of Business Ops, lives and breathes this. Um, you know, we've been talking about more music and putting on more shows. You know, this is months and months and months, like not one or two. This is like last season we're talking about shows. Um, it's a major investment to do it. Um, you may be taking risk by doing it, financial risk. Um, but the reality, as you pointed out, 
people have options here and they, you know it's a, it's a tough economy and if people if people could stay home um, they can be really entertained with TV and their phones and they can go to other things so we have to get creative we're in the entertainment business and uh, you know we've said that at least I've said that since day one of me being here Scott the team owner Scott you know says it all the time we're in the entertainment business so I think if we're not doing these things to add to the experience or bring in a different audience you know pull from a different audience we're doing a Taylor Swift night you got to come back for that one that one's ever doing no come right on. up my alley come yeah, on my well, alley. Yeah. Oh, you're a Swifty I didn't know that big Swifty big Swifty oh, I didn't know that yeah, so you let me know come back come <laughs> back over here we got um, so um, you know, we're seeing a huge response from a female demographic yep. and bringing little girls to the game. I'm not saying little girls don't also enjoy hockey, yeah. but there's also a lot of excitement because uh, they're able to see a musical artist that's really kind of unattainable for most. Like, who's paying that type of money? Uh, I'm not, yeah. uh, you know, much to my wife. I hope my wife's not listening, but I'm not. And we're not, we're not, we're not doing that. Sorry, sweetheart, we're not doing that. Just letting you know. Um, but. Um, so we're trying to create um, opportunities for other folks that don't naturally engage in hockey to come and support. And, um, yeah, I, the response has been good so far and hopefully it continues. Yeah. Looking ahead to the Sea Dogs, uh, I know you'll be paying attention to Gatineau a lot this year with uh, having their uh, their pick for the draft next year like we did with Aldor yeah, last yeah. year. Uh, obviously, uh, your scouts will be uh, spending a lot of time in the rinks this year. Uh, what is the outlook for the Sea Dogs? Uh, where do you see, uh, I guess, when do you see this team being uh, on top of the league again? Yeah, it's going to be a process, and uh, it's a process our team is, again, f really familiar with, our fans are familiar with. And uh, Anthony, you know, Anthony and I have worked together for seven, eight years, so, you know, he, you know now him, uh, you know, steering the ship with hockey, like, he knows he knows what this all looks like, and, um, you know, our, our plan is to build slowly, but sl slowly, brick by brick. Uh, we only have two first-round picks this year, one of them being Gatineau's. We have two first-round picks the next year. You know, I think our 16-year-olds, guys like Egan Beveridge and Ben Amiot have really shown well. Um, we have some uh, other really interesting age groups, and uh, it's going to be brick by brick. I, you know, I don't, I don't think we're a team that's going to compete uh, in the next, uh, you know, this season or next season, but I think you're going to see similar to years past where it's a slow climb. What I will say is I know Anthony's appetite and our appetite and Travis's appetite is to not, you know, to make sure we're always in games and competitive. And I think you're seeing seeing that this year is it's not quite like, you know, 2018. <laughs> yeah. um, you know, we have younger players in the lineup, but uh, we're still competing, and that's probably the biggest difference you'll see with with uh, this time around. So to kind of follow up on that, you were the GM for quite a while. Just how difficult is that to kind of be hands off, or how much hands off are you on? Is this is we talked about it in our previous shows? This is Anthony Stella's team, and going into the draft, what? We've seen what work you do um, in draft wise and trades and kind of stuff like that, and working the phones till three in the morning with Richie for the for the Dao deal. But I guess just how much hands off are you, and how tough kind of process is that when you've been doing it for so long? Yeah, I, th I think that uh, I mean I think naturally it comes a point in anyone's uh, kind of career where, you may, where there's just change and this evolution, and it came a point for Anthony in his, in his career where you know he's someone that I have a lot of lot of time and respect and, and admiration for the work that he does, and it was a chance for him to now you know uh, do things you know do things his way and get that opportunity to take that next step. We need to promote from within and to watch them grow. You know, another example is a guy like Travis. I was an assistant coach. You know, it was really important for us this time around to have continuity and promote from within. And I'm gonna be there and I'm, I'm, I'm here and I'm supporting. And, you know, Anthony and I talk all the time and, you know, I'm, I'm still involved from a, as more, but more as, um, you know, if the last time around it was, you know, 80% me doing ta the talking and Anthony 20, you know, it's really Anthony doing, you know, the, you know, 90%, 95% of the talking. I'm, I'm there really just to be supportive and encourage and, uh, you know, throw, you know, different ideas and, and, and maybe contrary opinions just to create debate and discussion. But I'm really here just to support. Um, and we've worked long time enough that we, uh, we've worked long enough together. We know how each other work and, uh, uh, you know his work ethic is commendable. His eye for talent is is tremendous, and uh, uh, his loyalty is unmatched. So I'm really proud to watch him continue to evolve, and uh, he's going to do a hell of a job with this team. I really do feel that. Yeah, last one for me. I'm glad we brought up Rich Richie because uh, one of the funnest experiences I've ever had in this rink was the 2010 final when it was Moncton and St. John, and I was talking, telling Adam on the way up that I would do anything to have that sort of a <laughs> final again. Uh, 
When can he we might get disagree let, with that, let, the let, outcome let, wise. But. Yeah, let's, uh, how often, uh, or I guess, uh, let's uh, get on the phone with Richie and make it happen. And Because <laughs> <laughs> it's been 13 years, and uh, we need, uh, and I'm not, we just need that, something like that again. I was I was nine years old when that happened, so I don't, I'm joking. No, I wasn't, <laughs> um, you look it. <laughs> no, 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 no. I would a Moncton St. John final would be absolutely tremendous. It'd be it'd be amazing. Anytime we play the two teams play, it's always such a great rivalry. And uh, Richie does a great job there in Moncton, so I think you guys are I think you guys are pretty close to uh, knocking on the door again for uh, for for a cup and maybe cups. Yeah, absolutely. Well, we got about a minute and a half before warm up, so we really appreciate you taking the time as a long time listener, first time interview, friend of the show. Um, like I said off the top, I mean, to pick your team to go on three in the biggest tournament in the world and then for you to come back on, I truly appreciate it and all the support you've given us. Well, we appreciate the coverage you guys provide and the the coverage and um, the attention you bring to hockey and to the league is uh, is vital for our sport to continue to grow. So, despite your very, very poor prediction, uh, ungodly prediction. Uh, I really appreciate all that you guys do to keep up. Yeah, that won't happen again. Thanks, Trevor. <laughs>